stories. So, give them another big round of applause. So, how deep is the Father's love for us? You ever thought about that question? How much does our Heavenly Father love us no matter what? And uh, it's kind of neat where Ron showed a little emotion to you on how much our Heavenly Father forgives us no matter what we've done in our lives. And I think we can all get choked up when we think about the, the bad things that we have done to disappoint not only our earthly fathers. How many of you ever disappointed your earthly father before? Raise your hand. Uh, yeah, we have all done that, right? We have disappointed our earthly fathers, but how much more when we disappoint our earthly fathers does our Heavenly Father look down and uh, <laughs> shake, our head, shake his head against us? But he still loves us unconditionally. Doesn't matter what we did, where we've gone in our life, he still loves us unconditionally. And when I think about that, I go, wow, what an awesome situation that is. When our Heavenly Father loves us, and you know, we, I think it's really interesting how God developed and created this relationship between a, a father and a son or a daughter, and, and, and basically to show his love for us, that unconditional love that he had. And here's a picture of my dad in his pajamas, uh, but he's holding this, um, a, this certificate that he got. Um, it was uh, from the, the Japanese uh, I don't know what you consulate that uh, that kind of honored those that you know during the war. There's a uh, several people, several Japanese that were Americans that got sent to internment camp, and uh, my dad was one of those where he went from camp to camp. And I just kind of pull up this uh, little uh, essay that uh, my pastor's wife in Hawaii wrote. Uh, just having a conversation with my dad, and that, it kind of, uh, you know, things that I didn't remember, and, and um, I, one of the things is that he was uh, in uh, Honolulu at one of the camps, and he got transferred to another camp, and then ended up in Tulare, California, and, and uh, I didn't realize it, but yeah, he had been in a concentration camp back, in, back east somewhere, in New Jersey, I think it was. And, and I'm just thinking of all the history of how my dad, um, he, he was born in Hawaii and uh, raised in Japan. And uh, at age of 17, he returned to uh, Hawaii. And uh, I mean, his, his story of, of his life is, is just full of uh, things like, um, he loved to climb trees, I guess. I, I guess that's where I got love the, the love of climbing trees. And if you know what a eucalyptus tree is, um, he climbed and it said that he went up, <coughs> up, and up. He couldn't go down. And he and eventually he fell down and, and uh, they thought he died. Uh, but somebody gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, resuscitation and, and the rest of the story, he still survived that fall. But when I think about my dad and how he uh, influenced my life. Uh, gave me the work ethic. Uh, I remember from very young age, she used to go and after work, go and mow yards to make a little extra money to, to feed the family and to uh, give us the life that we enjoyed. And so I remember from a very young age going and taking care of yards. So some of you might uh, know that I already love gardening. Uh, that's where it comes from. It's a little heritage that was passed down from my dad. Uh, I enjoy landscaping. And, uh, when I go back to Hawaii to visit, I'm over there cleaning up. Uh, you know, a lot of people think I'm crazy because you think, you know, you go on vacation and what do you do? You sit around and enjoy life, right? But no, I enjoy, this is where I really enjoy is, is doing landscaping and um, Tina can attest to that, right? Uh, Friday, uh, uh, she ordered a, a, th a ton of rocks, gravel, and uh, I got that spread because we're having that Father's Day picnic at our place, and I wanted to make it look really nice, so a ton of rock, 
using a five gallon bucket, loading it up in the back of my truck and dumping that thing. Uh, so those of you who are coming to the picnic will be able to see uh, Tina's yard get transformed. I just love gardening. In fact, um, this morning I cut uh, one of the irises that uh, Reva actually gave me, that yellow iris over there. And uh, I also cut one. This is the last of the irises. And uh, you know, when I think about God's awesome love for us and the beauty that he has created, and I, I, I don't get it when people say, well, there is no God, and then it just happened. It was accidental that all his beauty that surrounds us is an accident. And I go, you're, you're crazy if you don't understand God's love. And the only reason why someone would say something like, you know, there was a big explosion in the air and then uh, all, all this stuff happens, I go, how can you believe in something that is so awesome as, the, as our Father's creation that He gave us to enjoy? How can you believe in anything else? And, and uh, when I think about the, the family relationship and how is it that, you know, <coughs> guy meets girl and then they get married and all of a sudden there's a little one that comes along and 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 that there's a strong bond between the the, the father and his kids. It, it just happened that way. It's just an accident that there's this big bang and that all this life is it, just there. <clears throat> if you don't believe in God, how sad is that? I'm glad I have a heavenly father that loves me so much that he was willing to show his love to me <coughs> and send his own son to die for me. This, this puppet show was about, well, actually it spawned off um, one of the comments that our uh, rock kids made because we talked about fathers and he says, I've never met my father. And how sad is it, especially in today's society where you know what? Uh, God is thrown out and families are broken and kids are growing up with a fa without a father. You know, they say, well, um, I have a mother and a mother or, or families get split up so mom's here and dad's there and you gotta go here and we gotta go there and I know what that's all about because I was part of that. Because I've been through it. And how that really devastates the children when the commitment of marriage is not held together. And it's like when I do marriages now, I, I not only have a vow between <coughs> husband and wife, but now I also turn to the people that are the guests and I have them say, you know what, when they go through their struggles, I want you to promise that you won't say, well, get rid of him, he's a jerk. But I want you to promise that you encourage them to stick together to fulfill that vow. And those of you who had vows, right? Till death do we part. Where, where's people's words anymore? You know, is their word true anymore? Our Heavenly Father says, I will love you no matter what. In, in, in John, 1 John 3, it says, see how great the love of the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. And such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are the children of God and it's, it's, it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is and everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies, purifies himself just as he is pure. And then over in Luke, it says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and, and you go to that friend at midnight and the friend, and, and say, friend, let me eat three loaves of bread. <coughs> a friend of 
mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. And I cannot get up and teach you anything. Now, how many of you ever had somebody call you in the middle of the night asking for food? Huh? Yeah, you want to just sleep, right? Don't bother me. He says, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find not, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, you will give him a scorpion? If you, even though you be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You know, the problem is, is that God wants to give Himself through His Holy Spirit to live in you. <coughs> and it's not His fault when we don't have the Holy Spirit because He is wanting to give. His love is so great, He wants to live inside of you. But the sad thing is a lot of times we don't ask. And it's a simple thing. Really, the simplest thing in the world to just ask Jesus and invite Him to live in you through His Holy Spirit. But yet it's the hardest step that anybody will ever make. You might ask the question, why? Why is it so hard for, for us to turn our lives and our will over to God? Well, a lot of times it's because of our stubbornness. We have this pride issue like, I can do it on my own. I don't need anybody to help me. But when I help people that's in recovery, you know, we ask the question, well, how did that go? Doing it your way, right? Again, people sing that song. I did it my way. Well, where did it get you? Just get you the grave. But what, ha what happens after the grave? What, what is the, your, where are you going to spend eternity? And you know what? When we think about eternity, the, the infinite realm, and the <coughs> short time we have here on earth, this, this time on earth, this goes like that. And the older we get, it seems like the faster it goes, right? You know, when you're, when you're young and you know, say, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to graduation, and, and graduation gets here, and you know, I'm looking forward to getting married, and, you get married, and, and pretty soon you're uh, walking with a cane. And uh, you say, where did all that time go? And we all have a journey. We all walk through life. <coughs> and the question is, what are you going to do with the time, the short time that the Lord has blessed you with here on the earth? How much time do you have left? We never know how much time, because we can walk across the street and, and the car can hit us and kill us instantaneously, and then our time on earth is no more. And then you get into this thing called eternity. Forever. And ever. And ever. What are you going to do with your life? There's a song that I like to play for you, and I want you to just listen to this, the words of this song very 